Welcome back, everybody. Today I got a pretty cool one for you. So, a couple of little updates. First of all, we never even did the V8 update. And what is V8? Well, I think I better give it a bit of pretext because a lot of people were getting a bit confused. And, um, you know, it's a fair comment, you know. Um, if I was to go and have a look at the actual contents of the pack, it does look a little bit disorganized. So, I thought I'd just take a quick minute to go over what it actually is and what's inside of it. Of course, you should have now, by now seen my Golden Sun Mochi 1 preview video, like a little AMV that I've made. And so what I wanted to do was just take you through what this actually is. Obviously, we've been doing a lot of stuff with video, uh, Shuffle Video Studio. I'm going to be uh, uh, doing some more stuff with that as well. Thanks for all the suggestions, by the way. I'm slowly completing all of those as I get round to it. Now, first things first, this document here, the description for the model pack, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of stuff. Now, obviously, V1 is basically obsolete now, right? But you will notice there's a folder path here. So that tells you, you know, what's inside the folder. So, you know, if I was to go to the GitHub, you'd notice, and or if you were to extract the packs, so if you take, say you were to take uh, version 8, it's going to have a whole bunch of folders inside there. One of those folders is called Decoder Research. So that would actually be the version one release, right? So what I've done is I haven't deleted any of the old stuff. It's all in there. So all of the version one workflows were in the decoder research folder. And then the V2 workflows were in the CFG research folder. V3 is in FP8 T5 scaled. V4 T5 FP16 CPU. Because every, every single time we're trying a new, a new route to getting it to work well, until eventually we uh, landed on uh, Q8 T5 FP16 CPU, which was the best quality combination for the VAE tiling that came out. Now, I think I took a little bit of a break at some point. So we got fast frames for V6. Then we get to V7, which is where I updated the repo and I got access to the new VAE spatial tiling decoder. And what that basically did was we didn't need to use all of this run pod business because I did give people a little run pod template so they could run Mochi in the cloud. It still works and you can still drop the uh, newer workflows in. It's just not necessary because you can run it on a local GPU. I've seen people run it with a, a under 12, I think a 12 gigabyte GPU. And I'm sure there's people doing tricks to squeeze it into even smaller amounts. But anyway, I, I think that's just crazy. But the point I'm trying to make here is that the V7 spatial tiling VAE, that's currently the best one, right? Now, I have updated it. So in the current, if you were to download V7, you're not going to see these, the batch latent. And that's because I've made a new node, which enables you to do batch latent loading. So you can just put it on increment and walk away and have all of your latents be done separately. Now, you could say that we don't even need to do it separately anymore, but it does make the memory situation a lot more comfortable. So, you know, being able to squeeze it down means you can do more frames. So even though you don't necessarily need to for just a two-second video, what if you wanted to do a six-second video? We still want to fit it in under 20 gigabytes, so anything is going to help. Now, I would note that I always had this pseudo image to video what do I mean by pseudo image to video? It means that it's not actually using the image. It's getting tokens from interrogating the image with like vision. To then do a text to image that matches the image you gave it. So in other words, you can prompt with an image. So you didn't have to type a prompt. You just gave it an image and then an LLM looks at the image and goes, huh, and makes you a video prompt. So that's what pseudo image to video actually was. And like I said, there's two versions. There's the text to video, and then there's the uh, pseudo image to video. The first lot, which was in V7, because they're in the same folder, V7 spatial tiling, they go in with my first latent loader node. Now, I've already explained what that is, and we're going to go over that in the video now. But really, today, I wanted to show you the V8. So if we take a look at V8, this is true image to video. So I already released these workflows. They've already been up for like a day or two. I've just been really busy with other things. So I haven't been able to get the video recorded. But today I did add the additional batched latent side load. Okay, so we're going to take a look at my V2 
latent loader and I'll explain to you what that actually is and how it works. But if we just take a look here, the V8, that is the true image to video folder. So if you're all sort of like, oh, I don't understand where all of these, where they all are. Let's just take a quick look here. So DJZ workflows, I can easily show you on my actual uh, GitHub here. But let's just go to the donut mochi. So as you can see, this is the folder structure. When you, unzip, when you unzip the archive, you're going to see all these different folders. And you'll notice that they are the same names as what I was just showing you. So if I show you here, V7, all the V7s are in V7 spatial tiling VAE. So that is this folder here. And then uh, the latest one, V8, that's in true image to video, right? So if you're not really sure, you know, it's, it's these two folders at the bottom right now that are the most recent. Now, if I take a quick look inside, you can see we've got a couple of new workflows that have been added, and that would be the batched ones. We're going to take a look at them in just a second. I'm going to try and make this a little bit easier for you guys to follow. So here's the true image to video section, right? And as you can see, you've got the batched latent side load, which was already released. Sorry, we've got the latent side load, which was already released. And then we've got the batched version. It's the exact same workflow. All I've done is I've swapped out my V1 load latent node for my V2, the V2 having batched mode. So when I say batched, I mean it will increment through all of the latents that it can find and make it easy for you to just sort of queue it up and walk away. Because with all the previous loading of latents, you had to like do it one by one, one by one, and it's a laborious process. If you have a hundred of them, and it takes a minute to do each one. Because even though it only takes like 20 seconds to actually do the decoding, for some reason it must take about 30 seconds to actually warm up and do the job. So I don't know how to get rid of that loading speed yet. Maybe I'll figure it out. I don't know. I don't like to confirm things until they're actually done. So with that long intro about how the workflow pack actually is organized, because there was a bit of confusion. People were a bit confused about, you know, well, which, which folder is it? Because I don't understand which one I should pick. And the reality is a lot of them were for research. And so as a result, some of these have now deprecated, okay? But all you need to know is that the V7 spatial tiling VAE currently is the sort of most advanced text-to-image version. And then the image to video. So all of my pseudo image to video in here has been replaced with this because it actually does take an image and it actually, you know, uses that to generate the video. It's pretty good. So with all that being said, I've probably said that twice. Uh, let's take a look at the workflows. So first of all, we're going to take a look at, we'll do the image to video last because it's a little bit more explanation. So here we have the V7 tiling, so with the spatial tiling. And so what you do is exactly the same as how I explained it before in the previous video. You would have these two group switches, right? So on, off, on, off, right? So when this is active, it's only going to do this side. So what we've done is we've used the full FP16 clip. We've offloaded it to CPU. Now, bear in mind, you do need a lot of system RAM for that to work. So if you don't have the system RAM, you can obviously use the FP8s. But for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to assume that you do have the system RAM for this. I've got it currently set up with my Golden Surfer video uh, prompt, which is how I made that video that we were looking at just now. And that's going to draw a random line from the prompt list, which I built in another previous video where we showed you how to use Claude or another LLM to generate nice video prompts. Remember, Mochi can only use 256 tokens, so keep it under that. Now, once we've encoded our prompts, it gets sent into the sampler. We're using 848 by 480, uh, 49 frames, 100 steps and 7 CFG. And then we're going to save the latent with the current Comfy Core save latent node. It's not my own one. It's built into Comfy, so you should have no problem with that. The, I'm using my project file save node, which has been renamed, and that gives me the ability to organize my stuff. So I do like to be able to keep it all separate and know what the hell's going on with my work. So there's that saved. Once you've batched a whole bunch of these, I tend to just leave it on overnight. I'll go to bed. I'll leave like 60 of them on. 
and then I'll wake up in the morning and they're usually done. So I turn that off, turn that on, and then we're here and we're ready to look at the decoding side of things. So as you can see, we've got the Mochi VAE decode spatial tiling. I'm using 8, 8, 16, 1, and 256 for my values. Obviously, with the tiling is true. And this is the new node here, DJZ load latent V2. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. I've got to show any hooked up to the current file so you can see what the actual file it's uh, processing is. And if you look, this list is not a selection. It's to let you know what the number is, okay? So I, you might have hundreds of latents on your output folder. So it's a good to be able to say, I want it to start from 40. So say I want it to start from 40. I just type 40 here, okay? And then click Q. And what it's going to do is it's going to do the latent which I wanted to pick. All right. So it should show us in a second that this is going to say 41.latent. And then it will increment to 41. And what does that mean? It means that you can not like how we queue up the generation and saving of the latents. We can queue up the loading and decoding of the latents. So again, you don't need to sit there and click next queue next queue which was kind of annoying so like i said i spent the uh, morning building this somebody requested it and i think i did explain it in a previous video that i was thinking about doing it so i actually did it and like i said you have it on increment the seed indicates the position in the list and then it's going to increment through them so as you can see 41 that's the one that i picked but the advantage is that if i was to do another one like that i've got now i've got another one in the queue when this is made, it'll just immediately move on and start making the next one. So that's the big advantage. So it would be the unattended decoding of latents by using the queue. Obviously, you can use the instant or you can use the numbers, you know. So say you know, oh, I want to start from 40 and go to 46. Obviously, you'd queue up six and start it at seed 40. And then that's only going to do those, right? Or... Um, it really depends how many latents you actually have, right? But then that's the whole point. So it takes a lot, of, a lot of work out. You don't have to sit there for hours decoding latents anymore. Just use my DJZ load latent V2 in increment mode. All right. So uh, looking at this, uh, no, wait, looking at this one next, this would be the pseudo uh, image to video node. It's exactly the same. So in this one, what I've done is I've said, here's my image. Um, and then here's my prompt, which I'm using to generate the actual prompt. So what it's doing is I'm, this is, this is a, an instruction to get the LLM to write us a video prompt based on the image that we load. So that means we don't have to type a prompt. We can just give it an image. It will make it the right size, turn it into a video prompt, and then make the image with text to image. That's technically what pseudo image to video does. And then the same thing happens over here. As you can see, we've got low latent V2. So it works incrementally, just like I just showed you with the last one. And finally, if I go and have a look at this, this is the same exact workflow as the last one we just looked at. It's the same exact workflow as pseudo image to video. The only difference is this is now true image to video. And how did we do it? Well, thankfully, Mochi wrap had been updated by Kijai. He put in the Mo Mochi image encoder, which has a true VAE encoder. All right. The uh, details are actually in the article. So if you look on my main article here, so here, scroll all the way down to the bottom, tells you where the workflows are. Go to the main article. And then if I scroll down again, you will notice I've added something here VAE encoder tells you what the model it is that you need, where to put it, and that means you can actually run that now. So as you can see here, we've got our encoder. It's going into a sampler. All right, we've got it running on 4950. Now, uh, a lot of people are getting their knickers twisted over the Sigma scheduling business. Um, just to give you a good rule of thumb, whatever steps you pick, half it, use that as your linear steps. Um, leave the threshold noise alone unless you know what you're doing. 0.025 is fine. And then denoise, 0.5, you'll get, you'll get reasonable results, okay? Now, the, now, obviously, you can mess around with it if you want. I would recommend do it. I would recommend experimenting with these values on a lower steps. 
just remember you can't you've got to i use half it's a great way place to get started you can experiment with whatever values you like but sometimes it will reject you and fail because there are some rules here but i think the best way to explain it is if you have 100 do 50 if you have 50 do 25 and so on just do use half okay it's a safe value the denoise value is exactly the same as image to image the only thing is i found that 0 0.5 actually gave you a really good representation of the image that you used. The only issue was that the movement might suffer. If you go too low on the denoise, it'll almost not do anything because that's the strength of the video model. If you have it too high, it doesn't look like the image you gave it. If you have it too low, it's just your image and doesn't have any motion. So there's a bit of a sweet spot, but what I would recommend is 0.5 as a, as a sort of place to start off, all right? No need to use split sigmas, okay? Low sigmas will just look terrible. Uh, we actually used high sigma with our flux, flux upscaler implementation. That was quite a couple of months back now, but um, or it feels like it. Maybe it was a couple of days. You know how it is in the AI space, right? Everything moves at light speed. But anyway, if we take a look at this here, it's going to save our latent. And then, of course, if we do the quick switch, we just click, click. And then we've got my DJZ load latent and we can do the incremental decoding just like how I explained. So that's pretty much it. I wanted to give you guys a quick update because to be honest, it's like the workflow was already working. There was no real need. Like all I had to do really was put in the Sigma schedule and the imaging code, tell you how and where to put the model. And then obviously we've done this uh, improvement here, more like a quality of life deal, really. So you don't have to sit there and manually feed it latents. Because if you've made 100 latents, it can take hours. So this is what I've done. Hopefully you'll get some benefit from all of that. And look out for new updates to the pack as new features arrive. There is something called Mochi Edit. I am aware of it, but it's not matured yet you really got to give the developers some time to actually like hash out what they're doing and get it working. Otherwise, all you're going to get is a buggy, buggy workflow that doesn't do what you want it to do and it'll crash a lot and you'll be unhappy and nobody wants that. So this is pretty much where we are. And again, just to run through it one more time, add your image and queue it. It'll give you uh, the latent and then once you've got that done, swap it out put it into decoding mode and off we go you can get video so that's it that's all you got to do um i think next video we're going to take a little bit little look at some more improvements to shuffle video studio and some web stuff okay so thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time